Welcome to this Adarin screencast. In this screencast we're going to look again at the partner search but this time we're going to look at the results page. So let's run a basic search first of all. So uh, for simplicity I'll run a grid reference search for SO2242. We'll put a buffer on as well. It'll be 250 meters so you can see that on the results page. We'll also on species categories here, as this video will be public, we'll take off priority species. Um, we'll just plot that grid reference to ensure it's correct. That looks fine. And we'll run that search. So this is the standard results page. You've got three tabs here. There's a couple more available which we'll go and look at in just a moment when we edit the search. So the first, the first tab here, the Overview tab, as the name implies, gives you an overview of the search area. On the right-hand side, you can see a map both of the initial search area and also any buffer that you've specified. And you've got a little bit of detail here with uh, some information here in the center about any parameters, any filters that you've applied to the search. The next tab along is the Species tab. Uh, as the name implies, here's the individual species records. And as you scroll down, you'll see these are initially paged 50 records to a page. You can uh, order these very rapidly, uh, so you can group them by birds or by the categories they belong to and so on and so forth. The other uh, item you've got here which is very useful is the search here. Now this is dynamic and searches all of the columns simultaneously. So uh, maybe we're after a, uh, a mammal, so we can put in mammal and then maybe we're after a badger, so we can put in badger, and maybe we're only after uh, ones in a particular grid reference, so maybe we're after ones that are in uh, 221432. So there we go, we've searched and we very rapidly we've filtered those results down to the records that we're interested in, so that's a very useful feature. If you want to see the full details of a particular record, simply click on it, and the full details are returned along with a map of the location, just click on a different one. We get the map's corrected itself now and showing the exact location of that particular record. And of course, this polygon here shows the exact resolution of the record. The point simply shows the center of that polygon. So if we choose a different resolution, we can choose this one here, which is a one kilometer record. And let's see if we can find one at a very high resolution. There we go, some very high resolution records here. So if we click on those, we'll see here we get a very small polygon, as you would expect. So I think that's actually a one meter resolution record. So that's the actual species list. Next, let's move on to the species map. This is a little more complicated. So, it takes a few moments to load. Okay, that's better. So here's our species map. So you've got a lot of colored dots here. Uh, some are circular, some are square. So let's deal with the square ones first of all. So you'll see here first of all that some of the, um, the icons here are square. So the square icons indicate one kilometer uh, resolution records or worse. So you'll see that these are all placed in the center of a one kilometer square. If you were to include 10 kilometer records, you'd see squares in the center of 10 kilometer grid squares. Uh, the other uh, records are circular, so those indicate records that are at uh, a better than one kilometer resolution, so 100 meter or better. The color of the squares or circles is very important. It indicates where the priority species are there. So uh, if we'd included priority species, you'd see a lot of these dots would be red, and that would indicate that that dot includes priority species. The orange dots indicate that there's no priority species, because we've excluded them, but there are species of conservation concern. The yellow dots there indicate there are locally important species, but nothing of a, a higher importance. The number on the icon indicates the number of different species that are at that particular location. So let's zoom in a little bit here. So if we choose one here, uh, this number two, so you'll see here there's two species there. Also it gives you the distance, the distance from the centroid of the search area to that particular location. Okay, uh, We can scroll down here, we can see if there's numerous records there, there's a little scroll bar will appear and you can look down. That's pretty much it with the species map. 
Let's now look at these buttons at the top here. We'll use the central one first of all, which is the edit button. So if I click on that, that'll take us back to the search page, but it will pre-populate it with all the parameters that we used on that particular search. So I'm going to include some extra information here. I'm going to go to the Habitats and Sites tab, and I'm going to include Habitats and Sites and run this search again. It might take a little bit longer now. It's searching through a lot more data. OK, and we've come back. Now this time we've got two extra tabs here, Designated Sites and Habitats. So if we click on Designated Sites, as the name implies, we'll see here a list of the sites which have been found. They'll be in different categories, so we've got some ancient woodland, we've got some priority woodland, we've got a road verge nature reserve, we've got an SAC, and also a triple SI. We've also got some toggles here, and on the map below we can, uh, we can uh, change those toggles to display those particular uh, sites on the map below. So if we turn uh, Ancient Woodland on, we'll see that's now appeared on the map below. I'll turn that one back off again. We've got a Road Verge Nature Reserve. So there we go, that's now appeared down here. And so on and so forth. The SAC and Triple SI is probably the River Wise. This may take, may take a little longer to display. But there we go, it's displayed that on the map for you. The Habitats map is very similar in principle. So all the different habitats that have been found are displayed there. Uh, the ones which are highlighted in red are the priority habitats. And again, the toggles here allow us to turn them on and off. So if we turn on the semi-natural broadleaf woodland, and we can scroll down and we can see where that appears on the map and so on and so forth. We'll turn on the standing water. That's now on the map. We can turn them back off. If you have multiples of these on, you can use the reset button to turn them all off simultaneously. Just a couple more items to deal with. This first button here is the download button. If we click on that we have the option to download the data or various parts of the data in different formats. So we can download a shapefile of the species, we can download that as points, so centered points, we can download those species records as a shapefile of polygons, so these two are, uh, are downloads which you would use then in a GIS program. We can also download a shapefile of the actual search area as a polygon. And then finally, uh, we can download a comma-separated value file, a CSV file. Uh, the EMAP XML file there is just for testing. You can ignore that. Finally, we have this button here, which launches or, or displays the search data in the Cofnod EMAPPer. So if we click on that, it'll open a new tab, and it'll load all that data into the eMapper interface. It's a very powerful tool, so I'd encourage you, if you get the chance, to take the tour on this button here. But it allows you to both to see the records and also uh, or see the records on the map, but also see the underlying data all in one place. So it's a very powerful tool and well worth taking your time to navigate your way around it and get familiar with it. Well, that concludes this particular screencast. We thank you for watching, and as always, we uh, mentioned that we welcome feedback, so if you'd like to get in touch with us, please get in touch via uh, info at biz.org.uk.